Leonardo Tyner, how you doing, man? What's up, y'all? What's going on? Good, good. Hey, you know, we you you had a hell of a career in this boxing game. If we wanted to look back over, you know, your career, you know, being a fighter, but also some of the best uh, fighters you shared the ring with, including amateur fights, professional, and sparring. Uh, first off, just tell us, how'd you get in this boxing game? Well, I was in the streets a little bit and uh, doing my regular hustling kid style and the police kept coming to my advice to go to get my hair cut. And um, I was talking to some guys saying, man, I'm sick of the police and all this and doing that. They were like, man, my, my father trained and we be boxing. Go up there, we training up there. And I'm like, well, matter of fact, they were just talking, they were talking about boxing. I asked them. Like, damn, man, y'all for real? They told me to go where to go, and I went up there. And shit, man. Where was this? And you're from Detroit, right? Tell Detroit, me your upbringing and what about what that gym was. I was from I'm from the Detroit west side of Detroit. You know, I started boxing late at 29. I turned pro at 29, but I was you know in the streets and stuff. You know, so I never got in trouble. Still, you know, I used to beat up bullies. So. So I was, you know, selling drugs and stuff, right? And the police was kept busting my house and stuff, and they tore up my PlayStation, and that really what got me mad. I'm like, oh, they just, just ripped my PlayStation up. So that's what saved my life, I guess, because something could have went different. So I went to the barber shop like I normally do, and got my hair cut, getting my hair cut, and guys was talking about boxing somehow, because two guys um, boxed in there. So. They were talking about, I was like, man, dang, for real, where at? So they told me, and, and I went went up there, talking my street stuff, you know, because I know I can fight anyway, so I'm talking. So the, I was talking so much, the trainers got a guy that was one to know and made me get in there and box him because I was talking so tough. So we start, we in there boxing, you know, so I'm, I'm a street guy, so, you know, so I'm in there. And somehow I dropped this guy, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm, I'm fighting, you know what I'm saying? I had no skill as far as fighting, but I knocked him down. Then from there, everybody wanted to train me and I started training from there. Gotcha. Went every day from there. The name was what? The, the gym, it was Bustle. Huh. Then I went to Kronk after that. You know oh, you went to Kronk gym. Pro. How many years in Kronk? Tell me about those years. Those years I was sparring, um, Guys like Trouble Man all the time, Trouble Man Thomas, Marlon Trouble Man Thomas, guys like that, Ferdell, the late Ferdell, and then other guys like the champions, Tommy Milton, all of them used to be there all the time. Manuel, you know what I'm saying? Manuel said I remind him of Aaron Pryor. So that yeah. that stayed with me. He said I used to look up Aaron Pryor, I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Hawk. Emmanuel Stewart, tell me about being around him and what if that praise meant from him. Man, just Man, you're being around, that made everybody, that's the, that's like, to a street guy, we looking at the, the richest paid guy around, you know what I'm saying, driving the nice cars, but when you in boxing, that's the guy with the nice cars, the, the guy to look at, so, we had Manuel there, so it was like, come on, but I, I learned all this late, I wish I'd have knew and been around them when I was young, you know what I'm saying, but I seen all this late, but once I seen it, I liked it, because it was, you know what I'm saying, and I never thought about turning pro until they said it. So that's another thing too. Good stuff. Um, your pro, you, you've been in the ring with a long list of fighters. Um, just going over uh, it was some of the names, you fought guys like Canelo, Floyd Mayweather, uh, sparred guys like Danny Garcia, Andre Berto, Keith Thurman, uh, Sean Porter, Jesse Vargas, uh, Shane Mosey, the Charlo brothers, you fought Antonio DeMarco, Lamont Peterson, Wale Amatoso, um, Mark Arnaldis, hey, Gilbert of... Venegas. Tell us all the ones you've been in the ring with. Um, who stood out, obviously, you know, to you? Just what stands out with these memories, just these sparring and all these fights? It's been a lot. It's good memories, man. Uh, first start off with the top guy, Floyd Mayweather. Just... You know what I'm saying? This somehow getting to the top with him coming in late, somehow getting banded with him somehow. That was unbelievable to me. Like how as I'm in the room with him somehow coming in late, you know what I'm saying? So being around him was just 
I knew I made it, you know what I'm saying? To me, far as me being, coming in late, being from the street. So, then, it, you know what I'm saying? Then I boxed him. Our first time we boxed, you know what I'm saying? He didn't know who I was, so I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about shit, bringing it. So, I felt that I, I held my own in that one. And then we boxed again. Then he showed me what was how, who he is. You know what I'm saying? He boxed me good, <laughs> doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? I know you was there too. <laughs> yeah. So what fight was that? Madonna? Yeah. Because you had fought Chris Pearson, his First, fighter. Yeah. What was that fight like? And being in front of Floyd, then he came to you after. Yeah. See that 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 was the start of it right there. You know, fighting Chris. You know, so I was talking to Floyd as I was fighting Chris. You know what I'm saying? Like. What's up? What's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Talking shit to him as I'm fighting this fighter. You know what I'm saying? Knocked this fighter down and close fight. A lot of people thought I won, but it, it is what it is. And I seen Floyd, you know what I'm saying, in the back. I was like, man, bring me in, man. Bring me in the spot. I'm like, I got you, I got you. And, and you know what I'm saying? Right there. He called me, and I've been with him ever since. Canelo, this that was an experience, right? You fought a young Canelo. He was. How old? Down in Mexico, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, fighting Canelo, he but you know what I'm saying? I didn't know him as that, but I know he was a Mexican star to them. They loved him. Right. So, and when I was down there for the press conference and stuff, the, the people loved him, you know what I'm saying? So, it was a good, you know what I'm saying? We had a good, good, good fight, you know what I'm saying? I wish I could get another one. Shit, good payday, Canelo. He was going, even if I would have beat him that night, I think he still would have been a star somehow. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about the fight itself and just being in the ring with a young Canelo. Well, he need to say what, you know what I'm saying? I had, I was the man to me. You know what I'm saying? Canelo, he the man now. But I kind of, I think I brought Canelo out. You know what I'm saying? I gave him his. His toughness, where he know he could come to America now, like I can fight these guys, some, some tough young guys, you know, durable, tough guys, because I was the guy, I was the gatekeeper, you know what I'm saying, for everybody. You know what I'm saying? You beat me, you can you can you can be there, you can make it, you get your title fight next, you know what I'm saying? That's what guy that's what guy I was. And when he when he beat me in a real close fight, that's when he came, he fought Baldemir in, in um LA. And I fought on that on the card. So, you, um, one thing about you, you, you is one of the hardest fighters in the game when it comes to your chin, how tough you are, how gritty you are. I mean, what, you didn't seem to get hurt at all. You right. know, like how do you? Wh where's that temperament come from? What do you think? <laughs> that temperament come from just being in Detroit, man, and just being tough. You know what I'm saying? Just fighting. It's like when you fight guys. You got to worry about other guys swinging too. But in, in boxing, you got a, a referee protecting you. You know what I'm saying? Gloves <laughs> on. Nothing hurt. It's just a regular battle. Right. You know what I'm saying? So as you know, it just it's it's just a sport. Like you know how you play basketball. Like hey, I want to challenge him. That's how boxing is to me. Yeah, I want to challenge the best guys. You know what I'm saying? Even though they gave me short notices, I still was a challenge for me to try to steal their shine or steal their spot. Got you. Now it's funny, you know, the, today's fighters, um, the, the top welterweights, guys like Garcia, um, Keith Thurman, uh, Porter, other guys who've been around that class, Jesse Vargas, Berto, you've been in the ring with them. Uh, tell me, you know, they, uh, first off, Danny Garcia, what, tell me about sparring him and what fight was that for? Man, I see the thing about these guys who I spar. When I when they call me in, they be they hardest test too. So they got to get a gritty guy like me. So with Danny, when they first got me for Danny, Danny was fighting um Matisse, that strong ass mm -hmm. Matisse guy. Yeah, you know Lucas what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, so they brought me in rugged. You know what I'm saying? Punch hard. You know what I'm saying? Rough him up a little bit. So they brought me in, and I knew. When I was watching the fight, like Danny was gonna be okay because I was really bringing it to Danny too. We was scrapping in there, mm -hmm. so I knew Danny was straight. But I see Marcise threw a left hook in that fight. It was hard. Ooh, I'm like, damn, that motherfucker was punching. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Danny boy had to pull that. She did his thing in that, that one for sure. What about um, Keith Thurman? You got him ready for? I got Keith ready for. Um, Might have been Danny actually, was it? 
No, no it's somebody I, else. I got him. I got Keith ready for two fights. I got him ready for Guerrero, a softball. Okay. I, I boxed him softball the whole camp. Really? Yeah. In Tampa? Yeah. How man, was that, that work was, like? Oh, good work. Thurman, I can't wait till he get all the way back. Because Thurman, he was my guy at first, like the top guy. It was, you know what I'm saying, nice to me expense. But Thurman, I was getting him ready for Guerrero, you know what I'm saying? Being rough, coming soft paw, rugged. And I knew when I seen that fight, Guerrero wouldn't put no pressure on him like I was, you know what I'm saying? So I knew Keith was straight on that one. Because I stayed, I kept pressure on Keith soft paw, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. Even when I box soft paw, I throw more punches too, somehow. But, you know what I'm saying? So I know he, he had a, we had a good camp with Guerrero. Good stuff. And um, Sean Porter, how about that? Sparring with him. Okay, yeah, Sean, see. Sean, I wanted, I always wanted to like the fight Sean because Sean had the same style as me. You know what I'm saying? So, but I got, I bought, I bought Sean in the um, exhibition, 12 round exhibition. He was getting ready for Keith Thurman. That's right. I, oh, I recall yeah. that, yeah. So they called me, you know, off the couch, you know what I'm saying? And made me lose weight. But you know what I'm saying, that's his daddy, you know what I'm saying, smart, you know what I'm saying, do what you got to do. You can't be real big and coming in fresh one getting ready. Yeah. But his daddy, boy, see, his daddy's smart. He brought me in like a fight because he knew I, no matter what kind of shape I was going to be in, he knew it was going to be a good-ass battle. So, man, Shine, that was a good fight, but Shine was smart. He. He didn't fight me knowing like he, I thought he would. I thought he would just stay in there with me like, and fight. But Sean went in that boom, 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 and jumped out. You know what I'm saying? Did the right shit. His, his boxing. Boom, 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 boom. Out. Uh, out. And man, I was so. Man, you see that tape, man? My stomach was so big. Man, I was out of shape, boy. Yeah. But I had fun and I appreciate them for that opportunity. That was the first Facebook live video fight ever shown. The first one ever. So, Facebook, look out for us for that, <laughs> man. Uh, Jesse Vargas, what about him? Oh, yeah, Jesse. That was a good fight, too. Jesse, good skill, man. Tough. That was at the Vegas. I was there. It was the Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great encounter. Tell me about scrapping with him. Man, Berg is a good fighter. I want to see him, too, fight some more. You know what I'm saying? I like Vargas, too. Definitely. But, man, Vargas, good skill. Man, him did some dirty shit. I remember he was hitting me in my nuts and shit. <laughs> I, I ain't no dirty fighter at all. I don't know why Vargas made me do that. <laughs> he just, something he was doing just made me, I hit him in his nuts. Also, um, the Charlo brothers. Tell me about, was that in Texas you worked with them? Yeah, in Tell Houston, me about man. It. Them young killers coming up, boy. Man, I was boxing both of them boys, man. So, man, I, I be forgetting about that, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I kind of helped raise them boys, too, man. They fight a grown ass man like me coming in scrapping with the big boys, man. Man, Charlo Brothers, peace, man. Word out to y'all boys, man. For real. Got you. And, uh, because them y'all, they y'all good too, now, man. And I helped y'all too, bro. I'm telling you, y'all was sparring a grown ass man in me, boy. You know what I'm saying? And they? then them guys was paying for that work. Y'all was getting it free. Cause I was in Texas. But man, man, I pre y'all some dogs, boy. For real. Lions, I'm a real lion, I'm a Leo boy. <laughs> but y'all some dogs though, boy. Um, Good work. I helped y'all boys, I'm telling you. Gotcha. Throw y'all boy a couple thousand, boy. Y'all got it? <laughs> Shay Bosley. Uh, take me oh. back to that time. Shane, man. Shane helped me win my biggest, my biggest fight that I fought on Showtime. When I fought on Antoine Smith. Yeah, when I fought Antoine Smith. Shane was, I got some smart from Shane. Shane was showing me some good tricks, man, like in the inside. I learned a lot from Shane, too. I need to say, if when I see Shane, I'm going to tell him thank you. I think I did a couple times I sent him, though, about the, how I won that fight for that. But, oh, I owe Shane something because Shane taught me something, man. I wanted to shout out to Shane Mosley, man, for real, man. What about his skills? and Oh, skill, man. He was just, he wasn't even... Shane didn't even have to spar me hard, like, but I can, he was in the inside and just, <laughs> just staying right there. When I never, nobody would stay there and fight with me, but he was staying there, though, and not getting hit too much, right? Like, this was, this right there with me, but I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm banging, though, and he banging, though, you know what I'm saying? But he was just right there with me. He never backed up, really, like, he stayed right there. Like that Shane, then he wasn't getting hit though. You know what I'm saying? He was right there turning, ducking, huh? Throwing his shit. 
Shane taught me it, man. You taught me a lot, Shane, in Houston, man. For real. Shout out to you, baby. You said one of the best fighters you fought was Lamont Peterson, right? Oh, yeah, the best skilled fighter, man. He did everything right. Like this. He could do do whatever he wanted to do. He could fight either way. You know what I'm saying? Once we, we started fighting, he tried to fight me tough. You know what I'm saying? That's right up my alley. So, now I'm banging good. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking good. But once he said, man, let me skill him out. That's when he started jabbing, boom, boom, hooking, ha, 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 doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the best fight I ever fought, though, to me, as far as skills. It was Lamont Peterson, man. Shout out to you too, boy. You a, you a skilled motherfucker. The hooks, uppercuts, and shit. It's like, it wasn't hurt me, but he was landing the bitches, though. Like, <laughs> lifting my head up and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then I had to just, the only way I, I fought him tough is because I was like, nigga, the fuck you doing? Like, he was too skilled. So I was like, what the fuck? And bring to the streets on him. So that's how I fought him. And you know what I'm saying? We went hard, hard 10, you know, hard 10 rounds on pay per view. That was my first pay per view. You know what I'm saying? Late notice. Yeah, all of them was late notice, so ain't no use of me saying that. All of them was, so. Gotcha. What well, your first loss was to Mark, Mike uh, Arnaldis? What about that? Was he? Mighty Mike. Mighty Mike was my first loss. I was 19 and 0. And um, I was, it was on ESPN. Man, I came to the ring feeling good. A kid was saying something. I'm talking to the kid. I was just, my mind, I was just like, I was a star or something. I don't know. My mind was blue. I'm talking to the, to the crowd. This is my biggest fight. And I'm talking to the crowd. I'm on the ropes before the fight talking like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, I don't know what, man. I was just a hood guy that's on TV now. That's what my mind went, I think. So when the fight started, I was doing me. I lived up to it, you know what I'm saying? I was fighting good and Mike, it was that was a real close fight too. But he beat me, you know what I'm saying? 115, 113 to me. You know what I'm saying? That was my first 12 round fight. But man, I was I, I, I showed out in that fight too though. I was, you know what I'm saying, I hurt him. I was doing all kinds of shit. He was cut. So I didn't look bad on my first my first step up fight on TV. I, I held it down for Detroit, you know what I'm saying? So that was my my highlight of my step up that I fought a he I think he was one one loss champion. So that was you know what I'm saying that was to know if I was gonna be able to handle that kind of pressure of the big guys and I came through with flying colors on that one. Yeah, I appreciate that. And one of your hardest early fights, Gilbert Venegas, a veteran who've been around the game. Tell me about that scrap. Man. That was at a, uh, a ballpark. I was like, I was think I was eight and old. He was nine and one. Mexican guy, man, boy, we were scrapping. I think he's still fighting now. He might be losing now, but boy, he was a dog back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Man, that was a good ass, good. That's what I'm saying. I needed those fights. That's what helped me get and handle Canelo's and, and Lamont's and them. That's what helped me handle them guys, cause I fought guys like that early. Like I was fighting hard, hard. They call them bums, but they were hard, good bums. Niggas, 13 and eight, shit like that. Motherfuckers, you gotta watch out for. So I was scrapping with them guys. You know, good, good journeyman. Who I ended up being, I was in the, I was fighting them. So that was that was the thing. Give, boy, well, shout out to you, give her. Venegas. That's how you say his name. Okay. Venegas. Lotto, you've been in the ring. You're talking at Floyd's gym in Vegas. Uh, Tank Davis, right? Yeah. What about Tank? Tank, man. That was a, Tank, I was talking, man, Tank was um, sparring good. Tank a strong motherfucker. He punch up to at least 47, 54, though. You know what I'm saying? For him to be little. That shit, his power go up to at least 47, 54. I'm going to tell you all that, too. Motherfuckers. He got that. But it's like, I'm crazy too though, so I was telling him, you too little, you know what I'm saying? But he threw a punch that missed me, that I knew like, damn, this motherfucker punching though. He punching. 
But I seen them fucking motherfuckers up 54 2 in the gym. 85, damn near 75. He's a special talent for me. Yeah, but I seen him fucking them guys up. Jay Leon Love, you worked with him? Yeah, I bought Jay. Jay, when Jay was in a crime, Jay was a good ass, you know, boxing moving ass motherfucker, so. Jay was, uh, I didn't box him too many, but I boxed him a couple times. But Jay always, to me, I say I probably got him one time. He probably got me more than twice. Probably this boxing, doing, you know what I'm saying? Young, doing shit. You know what I'm saying? But he was young, so I might have got, he say I got him though. But to me, he was more of a boxing move. I wasn't trying to kill nobody. Then. Kevin Newman, you worked with him? Yeah, Kevin. I came down with Kevin. But he was training me, um, Floyd was training me and him. Kevin, man, that boy, that boy skilled the fuck up, man. Man, Kevin skilled up, man, for real. Kevin skilled up. I don't know, I don't, I don't know how the fuck he, how he lost. Yeah. But unless I, it's a big love name or something, unless it's just a rugged ass match and this gonna just be wild and just throwing him out of his place and making him, like, you know what I'm saying, like he moving yeah. backwards or something. Yeah. Uh, That's the only way I can see beating him a Madonna type motherfucker. Was them guys like that? Right. All right. Antonio DeMarco, you dropped him, right, and then yeah. in the fight, but you didn't win, but that experience, what was that like? No, I was fighting right in front of El Chapo. Shout out to El Chapo, free that man. <laughs> but yeah, I was, uh, if, and Chavez Sr., I was fighting in front of them guys, but um, DeMarco, I like DeMarco, a good person, good guy, man. DeMarco, a good guy. But we, we fight down there, man, it was a, it was a good war. Um, I, I dropped him the first round. I left Floyd Cap. See, Floyd a good man. People, I don't know what y'all be thinking kind of guy Floyd is, man. But Floyd said, go ahead, man. Let me go fight DeMarco. Still pay me to be at camp. Soon I came back from fighting DeMarco, he's like, you get your camp money? I'm like, yeah. He's like, my oh, man, that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, Floyd a good guy, man. But, man, DeMarco, that was a, man, that was a good fight, too. But I was out of shape, kind of. Even though I was in camp with Floyd, I didn't box him as much because we like family. So, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was boxing everybody else. And I wasn't doing nothing but living and enjoying life. But I, they called me to want to fight DeMarco. It was a week, like a week notice. Matter of fact, it was three day notice, bro. Three day notice. And I was like, hell yeah, take this shit. I felt I was in some kind of shape. Shit, the, you know what I'm saying? To get my my chance on the giddy. So I didn't pull it. He out hustled me. And I knew if I didn't knock him out, I wasn't going to win anyway. So I was trying to knock him out. So I, I used a lot of energy trying to get him out. I got tired in the middle. Then I tried again. I almost got him. Then he just out pointed me. Shout out to DeMarco. Nice guy. Andre Berto, when were you sparring with him? Another good fighter. Now, Berto, y'all. Berto Ben had the bag, dog. He was the guy, before I even seen boxers getting on, Berto had the bag. Berto was, we was in Winter Haven. Berto was riding around in Bentley's den, bro, for real. And I, I got, I forgot who I got him uh, ready for. I got him ready for a couple times. Berto was the first guy I was, was paying me to come spar. Get that good Al Heyman money. I was getting Al Heyman money before y'all even knew Al Heyman, baby. Al been paying me for years. Thanks, Al. Appreciate you too, man. Call me back some more, Al. <laughs> but I've been getting Al Heyman money for years. But Berto, the smart on Berto, man. Good, fast, good speed, good guy. Looked out for me, treated me nice. Shout out to Berto too, man. Appreciate you too, bro, for real. Good pay, good checks, boy. Then it's, it's um, old trainer, Tony, I think his name, Tony. He's, Tony Morgan. Yeah, he used to treat me so good too, man. I think he got some time or something. Did he get out now? No, but let's talk about. Um, Love you too, free Tony, man. Let's talk about all the people uh, you've been in the ring with. It created a brotherhood, kind of like a sense of respect. Like fraternity, baby. Tell me about being a part of this fraternity. What's it like being in the ring, but then having that camaraderie and respect afterwards all these years? The best thing you can have is the respect of your peers, and that's what I got, man. And appreciate that, you know. The had the respect of your peers, guys you fought, or guys that know who you fought and watch you fight. You know what I'm saying? So when when I see guys, the, the champions, and then they know me and they respect me, like, what's up, 
man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's that's respect. And then the young guys who coming up, they know me. You know what I'm saying? And they and they say they watch me, man. I, I appreciate that, man. That make me feel good. You know what I'm saying? For real, I feel good from that. Who do you think has made the hardest puncher you've been in the ring with? Some of them. Or Wale Amatosa, we have to give him some shine. Isn't he one of the strongest you've been in the ring with? Nah, he was the strongest guy. Not far as punching, like, he punch hard, but just his body, like, you know what I'm saying? You went there with somebody who just body just pushing you, and I went up, I always went up and wait. But his body, he was just a stone African motherfucker, man. Stone, this eating good African food or something. This a, man, this strong, man. You know what I'm saying? And he had skills too with it though. You know what I'm saying? So that was a good fight. I went back to Houston to fight that. Shout out to Wally too. I think he's still fighting too, man. But that was a, he had good time. He wasn't just no strong fighter. Man, we was talking crap and fighting, man. If y'all got that on tape, somebody need to get that on tape, man. Me and Wally Optimosa. Man, man, we had so fun in there talking. He dancing, I'm dancing, fighting. Man, going crazy. Shout out to you, my man. Wally. Atomosa. <laughs> gotcha. What what is your some of your favorite just memories being a fighter, people you connected with or you know, even I remember seeing you and Keith Thurman ringside in Vegas and you got you could tell you guys were buddies, you know, like he really re respect you. Did you get a lot of respect afterwards sparring with all these guys? Oh yeah. That's how that's how I got it now, you know what I'm saying? Just because of the sparring too with the guys I haven't fought. So the guys I fought I got the respect respect from, you know what I'm saying? So and all the guys, it's just like a fight, so I got respect for them, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm, I'm sparring a new up and coming champion now, getting him ready, like, you know what I'm saying? He finna be famous, he is famous. You know, my ton of love, you know what I'm saying? I'm in camp with him, but he got me woke up now where he got me wanna come back, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being in with him, he fast and shit, that shit waking me up and we talking shit and sparring. You know what I'm saying? He got me woke, I'm, he woke me back up, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna come back out here and get the bag too. And I've got to, soon I leave here, I got to go back to camp with him, man. So, I'll be back, boy. See you, Cleveland. What are some of the favorite places you've been to through boxing, such as fights and, you know, just... Poland, man, was good. What was that? Who, what was out there? I fought, uh, they robbed me in that one, too, man. They, they robbed, I got robbed a lot, too, but I knew what I was getting into if I didn't knock them out, so. But in Poland, that was a good fight, you know what I'm saying? I beat the guy, they robbed me. And I was walking to the ring, that's funny, that's a funny story. I was walking to the ring, and uh, somebody hit me real hard in my arm as I'm walking. And I looked and go, it was an old man, like, <laughs> a little short old man, and he walked away like, you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> I guess he must have been his granddad or, or something, man. But, he hit me hard, but it wasn't nothing to, to really hurt me. But it was a, that look who it was, I went to him. It was a little old man who did it. So, but that was a good fight. I, beat that, I won that fight, man. They just robbed me in Poland. It is what it is, man. What, what's, um, before the fight, you know, I beat them bad, too. Before the fight in the dressing room, what's that moment like where you're, you know, before battle and you get ready to fight? Though? Is it nervous? What are you feeling like before you go in the ring? I be nervous all the way up into, all the way up into uh, I get punched or a jab or something strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I be nervous like, ah, going to the ring and, you know, introductions. You feel good on introductions, you know what I'm saying? You don't think about it. But then when you go to the, see the guy, you know what I'm saying? You feel like, shit, it's good. It's, that's when it's time. But once you get in there, and one punch thrown like a jab or anything, it's normal. <laughs> it's normal. What does your temperament come from as far as just, uh, you, you have power too, like you, you know, you breaking people down, you showed your power in sparring in the fights, like where you kind of switch gears and bring the dog out, kind of. Right. That just come, man, from being from Detroit, man. I'm saying, that's why we just claim. I'm going to tell you, too, like, everybody love their cities. They like Philly, you know, Philly tough. Everybody got, you know, tough spots. But, like, Detroit is just, to me, this, this being from Detroit just make you forward tough and shit, Chevy built. You know what I'm saying? Just, I just, I was raised in this, man, and raised in Detroit tough shit, man. So, so. let's. 
Good stuff. Now let's talk about, you got another venture, the doing a little training and also the in the summer, the cooking. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't fell, fell in love with cooking, I guess. Everybody loving my food called kobacha. Yeah. Yeah. I've been cooking like lamb chops and see if I was saying somewhere where it was hot, I could do it. I'd be out here with this food. We'd be having kobacha right now. Yeah. But I just like to do it this, you know, in the hood. I, I got, it's like a hood thing. Only hood guys can do it. Like you tough in the hood. You can just set up a spot where everybody come by lamb chops, lobster tails, and shrimp fried rice, steak fried rice from you, you know what I'm saying? And have a, this this party out. Every hood should have a kobachi. 